MetaBase is a data visualization tool, but it's open source. And it's something that you can self host through a simple Docker container. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you what this tool is all about, show you how you can easily spin it up on your local computer and see what the visualizations are like that you can make. Now, like many other open source products, there is a cloud hosted option, but today I'm gonna to show you how to do it open source and get yourself up and running and start seeing data visualization essentially for free. To get started with the open source version of MetaBase, of course, we'll go to metabase.com and click get started. And this is going to prompt you to sign up for the cloud account and you can get a free trial, but we want to do the free open source version. So go down to this here and get installation instructions. And what this is going to offer you is instructions on how to get set up with either a Docker image or running a jar file, which would be for Java and the Java 8 or higher. In this video, we're going to go through Docker. And if you don't already have Docker installed locally, all you'll need to do is go to docker.com and download Docker desktop for either Windows or Mac, whatever you're on or Linux and get that set up. It doesn't take very long, but I already have this on my machine. So I have Docker ready to go and I'm just going to move forward with that. But again, if you don't have that, just take a minute to get that set up. Now, going back to the instructions, we're going to click on this more detailed information about running on Docker, and it's going to give us a nice quick start right here that we can work on. The first thing we need to do is copy this pull command, which is going to look on Docker Hub for the image of Metabase, which is essentially the prepackaged setup of Metabase that we can then run locally. So open up a command prompt or a terminal, depending on what you're on. And I'll say this is assuming you have Docker already running. Go ahead and paste that in here and press enter. And what it should do is pull the latest image from Docker Hub. So it's gonna grab this down. And then essentially all we'll need to do is run our own version of this. It's actually very simple. Now this is done. And the next step is to start the Metabase container. So we're gonna create our own instance of Metabase. And again, this is all open source, uh, free to use. So paste this in here. And essentially this is going to run a container called Metabase. And we'll see what this looks like. So that's it, it's done. And how do we know what just happened? Well, go back to your Docker desktop and as you can see under images, we have this Metabase image. And we can see in here that we've created a container as well that's ready to go and all we need to do is open it up. So over here, I'm going to say open with browser and it's going to take us to localhost. This is where this is currently running. It's in a container hosted here. And it's as simple as that, we're ready to get started. We'll go through this wizard here. What's your preferred language? Uh, what do we want to call you? I'll fill this out real quick. Add an email. You'll fill this out for yourself. Next. Now here's where we're going to connect it to our database. You can add this later, but I already know I'm going to be using Snowflake. So we're going to connect it to Snowflake, but you can see here, there's a lot of other options that you could pick. And this is wherever your data is going to live. So display name, I'll call this Snowflake. The account name is everything right here. Copy this username is this up here, and then your password for that username. I don't have a private key locally. If you did, you could put that on here. Next, we need to give it a default warehouse. And for me, I'm going to use the developer warehouse. This one that I call developer WH. So the database is case sensitive here, and I have one called analytics. All the schemas, and I'll add a developer role. Again, this is based on your environment, and I'm just picking uh, what I have, and that's it. So connect to database and that's it. We're connected. You can allow Metabase to collect usage data. I'm going to uncheck that and I'm not going to sign up for the newsletter and select, take me to Metabase. And just like that, we are all set up and ready to start using Metabase. Next, we'll just take a quick review of what it is we're looking at here. The main welcome screen is just giving you a collection of options based on your data. So it's immediately recognizing the two schemas that I have in my Snowflake uh, data here. If we're comparing it directly here, I have marts and staging. So it's picking this up. Let's go back here. So on the left, we have what's called collections and collections are essentially folders and ways to organize your data. So we could create a new collection and call it demo collection. And we'll say create again, it's over here as a new collection. You also have your personal collection, which is for you for testing and just keeping things there that maybe you want to work on, but you don't want your team to really get a hold of it. Next, we have data and you can browse your data. It comes with a sample data set as well as we have what we connected, which is Snowflake. And this is what we were just looking at. And it will allow you to dig in and show you a preview of the data that we have here. Back to the homepage. In the middle, we see these boxes with the lightning bolts in it. 
And that represents what's called an X-ray. And an X-ray is Metabase's way of kind of inferring what your data is about and giving you a pre-built visual based on the data types and what the data is and kind of what it understands it to be. So sometimes this is really helpful and just gives you, like it says, a quick look at whatever it is. And you can save this if you want. So again, that's called an X-ray and you'll see this a lot. So let's say we wanna save this. We can save this to our collection. This looks like it was created in an automatically generated dashboard collection, but we can move this by going right here to move and just put it in demo collection. And now if we go into demo collection, we can see here it is. Uh, we can get right back to that very easily. All right, so back to home. Up on the right, we have our settings and then a place to create new data. So up here, we'll click new and there's a few options here. First is a question, which is really a meta-based terminology for what do you want to report on? What do you want to visualize? You do it through the idea of a question. Alternatively, you could just write a SQL query and just build it uh, that way. And a dashboard is where you can put multiple questions and queries into one view. And then you store all of those in a collection like we did over here, which are basically folders. So let's start with the question. The question is going to walk you through this step by step rather than expecting you to know any SQL. So we can start from our data source. We'll say, let's just do customers. And again, it gives you options here. You can join to different things. So we could join to orders on, let's say customer ID equals order customer ID. You can add a custom column if you want. We can filter it down. So we could say we only want to filter where customers maybe have a certain amount of revenue. So we could say where total revenue is not zero, something like that. And then we can summarize things if you want. So it's really walking you through step by step all this stuff. So let's just visualize what we have so far. And here it is. It's giving us this output of the two tables joined together. And you can see up here in the column name where it's coming from. So this is joined and we can then save this. Let's just say customer order breakdown, you know, whatever you want to call it. And where should this go? I'm going to put it in the demo collection. Now it says, do you want to add this to a dashboard? And remember a dashboard is a combination of multiple queries or questions. So let's say, yes, we'll just create a new one. We'll create a new dashboard demo dash in the demo collection once again. And here is the view of a dashboard. It's kind of cool. You can uh, drag and drop and kind of based on the blocks, create whatever it is you want. Let's go ahead and save this. And you know, then you lose those boxes a little cleaner. Another thing you can do is add a text box. So if we add this text box, you can add it. Uh, and use markdown let's put it on top the best dashboard ever and then maybe some italics we could add a link markdown maybe some bullet points and preview and here we go we can see it looks kind of cool i mean this is not perfect but you get the idea just clean it up a little bit and save and now this is what our dashboard looks like let's try another route and do the sql query now and i have this query here uh, it's pretty much the same as what we just did. But just for example, I'm going to paste this in here and show you that you can just drop a query and now you can run it and it'll give you an output. An option you have here is to learn about your data. And this will let you kind of dig through each of your tables, your views, see the different columns. It might give you some example values. So it just gives you some information as you're building this out in case you're not familiar with it. You can also add variables. You need to add something in double curly braces like this, and it will infer that it is a variable. So let's say, for example, we only want to do where customer name equals that. And as soon as we put that here, we'll say customer name, it's going to create this box up here. And so let's say we want to run this and say, uh, Lakers, as soon as we run this query, it's going to use this and replace it orders dot customer name. Let's try again. And it gives you the output using that variable. Now, I'm not going to keep this in here long term, but I just wanted to show you that that's how you can do it. The other option up here is SQL snippets, and this is reusable bits of code. It's really like a little function or just little things that you want to do. Maybe like it says, maybe there's certain conditions here that you always want to do. So maybe we wanted to do where uh, like the same thing. So where customer name equals Lakers, Lakers only. That's the name of the snippet save. And here it, it drops it like this. So as soon as you put this in, it's going to replace this with that code. It's just dropping that code in here. So now we run, we should get the same example. Let's actually change this. Let's, let's just so we get a different output. Let's say 76ers and run that. Once again, I need to add this and there we go. So it did the same thing, but it's in a reusable bits of code and you can reuse this in various spots in different places. So uh, it kind of helps you keep it organized as a team. Again, gonna remove this. So let's save this now. We'll, we'll keep this in here. 
save, and we're going to call this Sixers data. We'll also put it in our demo collection, save, and we'll add it to our dashboard. And we can find that existing one that we already have and just drop it in here and save that. So now this is here as well. Of course, this is just table data. This is not very interesting. If we wanted to go back and edit this, we can go uh, to our demo collection, go to the Sixers data, and let's say we want to change the visualization. Maybe we want it to be um, a bar chart. We could say product name and then amount in USD. It's whatever you want. Don't worry about the data itself, but just to show you this is how you could save it, replace it, or save as a new question and, and just keep moving through this. So now if we go back to our dashboard, it's going to reflect this new change uh, that we made. The next thing I wanna show you is the idea of a model. And a model is really an extra layer or a representation of your data just on Metabase. It, I mean, typically you're just pulling from the data warehouse, but sometimes that's not exactly what you want and you wanna adjust it, but be able to control it a little bit more and reuse it more here in your reporting tool, let's say Metabase. For example, if we look at this customer order breakdown, we did some joins here, we did some filters, which is not exactly what's in the warehouse. You know, this is a kind of, you could think of this as a custom view and we want other people to not have to rebuild this, but use this as its own data source essentially. And the way to do that is you can convert this to a model. If you go to the options up here, there's an option to turn into a model. And again, it's gonna let you update the descriptions, customize metadata and build on top of this rather than having to constantly rebuild off of a data warehouse table. So turn this into a model. And so now it said, this is a model now, and we can view the SQL. You can see exactly uh, kind of what's in here. And now if we go to the right here, we can see edit metadata. You can edit, edit the query definition. And this is something that's recommended. We're not gonna go through all this here, but you can go through and determine specific categories and types of columns. So just in case it's not perfect and just have more control over what people are working with in Metabase. Now, because we have this, rather than having to do those joins, we can make a new question based on top of the model. Now, it may not show here right away uh, if you're doing, doing this hosted version, but if you just refresh, it should pick it up. Demo collection, here it is. So customer order breakdown, maybe we would wanna rename that to just customer order model or something, but now we can build on top of the model rather than having to do everything based on the warehouse models. So maybe we just filter this for example, main employee, let's do, we'll do me, visualize. You know, maybe create another bar chart, something simple. Let's save this, MK sales, and we'll add this to the same dashboard. Maybe we'll do something like this. But again, remember the idea of a model is that it's, you're adding an extra layer on top of what's available here. So you're essentially giving yourself a custom view that you and your team can work with within Metabase. more context about dashboards up here you can bookmark it obviously so you can put it onto your bookmarks over here and quickly have it at the top available for you you can make sure this data is auto refreshed so depending on what the underlying data is you can have it refreshed at a certain increment you can add subscriptions i don't have this set up but you could email this to yourself you could slack message it you can integrate that however you want so a lot of times people want to get this data pushed to them at a certain time you can set it up here as well The last component I want to talk about is the settings. So we have your account settings here. Obviously you can manage your personal account information, but more importantly is the admin settings. And this is where you can set up all of your integrations. You can review your database information. So here's the default sample. Here's our snowflake credentials. So if anything is off, you can come in here and change that. You can take a look at your data model and you can hide data if you want. So let's say for example, in Snowflake, we didn't want anyone to see the staging schema. We could come in here and hide all of these tables so that when people come in and try to work with this, they're not building anything off of staging. They only have visibility to marks. You can see the people who are involved and set up groups, permissions, again, integrations that you have, et cetera. Also back here in the data model section, we have the option to create segments. So you could segment your data and just create pre-built filtered versions of your data for people to use. Uh, you can also create metrics that people want to use. So if you want to create a consistent metric that you always want people to use so they don't have different versions of what they're trying to answer, you know, maybe you're saying we want the sum of quantity is always going to be 
total quantity. And of course you could make this much more complicated, but just build a metric and have it saved so that other people can use it in a more official way of calculating something for a specific table. And one more thing to mention is if you're going to do this in production, you're going to want to have a more official backend database for MetaBase to use. It ships out of the box with an embedded H2 database, which works, you know, it's intended to get you up and running and play around kind of like we're doing. But if you want it to be in production, you should connect it to a more long term database like MySQL or Postgres, and it can walk you through how to do that. We won't cover that here, but that is something to look at if you're going to do it long term in production. You're going to want to change that backend database away from the default one. So as you can see, MetaBase is a pretty awesome tool, especially considering it's open source. It may not have all of the needs that you want for a full fledged data biz tool, but if you don't need a whole lot and this can cover your use cases, now you know how to get started with it. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.